All right. Uh, one more thing. If someone gives you to prepare uh, aspirin from benzene, aspirin is very important chemical. A lot of you must be having aspirin now and then. Okay, this is not aspirin, and I'm not going to give the structure of aspirin. But uh, prepare aspirin from benzene. So one exercise, of course, would be to find the structure of aspirin. Once you have found the structure of aspirin, then another exercise would be to work out the pathway to get to aspirin beginning from benzene. So think of aspirin. If you know of aspirin directly, start with the second exercise. If you don't know what aspirin is, you have to start with the first exercise. So whichever way you get to aspirin from benzene. Ooh. Okay, then let me do the first exercise for you. And then we'll see. This is aspirin. Okay. Now, uh, it looks like if you can create salicylic acid, then on adding ethanol chloride, you can get salicylic acid. This oxygen is going to attack this C double bond O is in the first category of reaction we have seen when this oxygen hydrogen bond breaks this oxygen can act as a nucleophile and attack this carbon. This Cl will come out and this acyl group will get added on this oxygen. So it seems like if you can get to salicylic acid, you can get to aspirin by this reaction. And how would you get salicylic acid? Now, in the last reaction, we have seen how to get phenol out of benzene. So out of benzene, you prepare phenol and we're using Colby's reaction. From phenol, you can get salicylic acid. That's easy. So I'm not doing it for you. You prepare phenol from benzene. How you're going to do this? We have seen this. And from phenol, you can get salicylic acid if you carry out Colby's reaction. Okay. Okay. Then uh, let's see a situation very similar to Colby's reaction. And suppose I make you to react formaldehyde with phenol. Now, the procedure will be exactly the same as you had in case of Colby's reaction. The position, uh, ortho and para, they are going to attack uh, this carbon. One thing more, we didn't discuss why we got salicylic acid, why this carboxylic acid came at ortho position. Why did it go to para position? Can you guess, can you think of a reason why the major product should be the one which is ortho substituted rather than para substituted. Oh, yes. Um, when we studied electrophilic aromatic substitution, I told you that the product, the major product is at para because of repulsion at ortho, unless there is hydrogen bonding at ortho. And there is a hydrogen bonding at ortho. So this is the major product. Fine. All right. So here, Go for the major product and find out what will what will be the product actually. So finding out the product is simple because again this carbon is going to be attacked by the ortho or para positions. And what you are going to get, I'm directly drawing it. You draw the first the RS in which you have a charge at ortho and para. And that C minus is going to attack this carbon. Do that. I'm doing it directly. Because I have done it many times before in my life. If you two do it directly, then that will be your first time. And that would mean you never did it in your life through proper mechanism. So that means you will never be as good as me. So uh, these are the two products. The one at ortho and the, in, the one in which 
there is substitution at para now you have to figure out um, which is the major product as you can see there are two alcoholic groups and there will be hydrogen bonding between them so the one major would be the one which is ortho substituted and the kernel will be the one which is para substituted that's it that's it simple i mean there's no new concepts that we are studying this is a hard nucleophile it's going to attack this and this reaction is going to occur bearing in mind that aromaticity you have to regenerate you cannot compromise with that fine let's move on to a very important reaction in this category in which something will be added in the on the benzene ring and that very important reaction is rimer thymine reaction in this reaction what we do is we take a phenol we take phenol not a phenol we take phenol and we add chloroform and base we also heat it and then we add h plus h2o when we do that we get salicylaldehyde like this ah uh, okay now this is a product first of all get yourself familiar with this the name of the reaction primer thymine reaction take your time to look at the reactant take your time to look at the reagent take your time to look at the product and then take your time to reconcile all these four things name reactant reagent and product and be very much confident that you will be able to see the product in your mind once you listen to the name of this reaction rimer thymine reaction fine now once you have made yourself familiar let's start to understand how this thing happened now this is you are adding in the second step so you don't have to think about it initially what initially you have to think about is this phenol this base this chloroform and you are adding heat i will see the reason why you have to add heat but how the reaction will start the reaction will start with this with some reagent that reagent here is chloroform and base chloroform is neutral reactions are initiated generally by unstable charged species this base is going to do something base abstracts hydrogen now here is a acidic hydrogen because the negative charge developed on oxygen can do resonance with the phenyl ring so step number 1 will be this base comes and abstracts hydrogen with phenyl and make this phenoxide ion step number 2 would be that base also abstracts hydrogen from this chloroform because hydrogen on the chloroform is also sufficiently acidic because when hydrogen comes out then the negative charge on carbon are stabilized e by the inductive effect of 3 chlorine and b by d orbital resonance chlorine has its empty d orbitals and in that d orbitals there can be this diffusion of this negative charges so because of these two re reasons this negative charge is sufficiently stable 